Hello everyone and welcome to today's Hotspot series on Stoke-on-Trent. And there's about five different postcodes in total that make up Stoke-on-Trent. And we're going to assess them and analyse them and show you four that we really like the look of as showing good potential going forward uh, for our buy-to-let potential opportunities. And that's the premise really of these sort of videos. We've done a couple of different Hotspot series now in different locations in Birmingham, Newcastle and some other areas. And the idea is really to show you what the data is showing what sort of locations to maybe consider for your next buy to let and why. And then when you wrap them up and you kind of consider all these different locations, you start to get a feel as to which sort of areas are performing, what areas have performed historically, what they're currently showing in terms of speed of sales, um, house price value growth. And we look at different data sets over a 12 month, five year and 10 year time frame. We use websites like Zoopla, Home, and mouseprice.co.uk to give you a really robust um, mixed viewpoint and mixed data set that can show you um, really what the different locations are performing like um, and show you as well what our current kind of baselines, what our rules of thumb are as a kind of company when we're selecting an area, what we want to see that data kind of showing because it's great having data, but you need to obviously have some way to kind of pass that and look at that and see what that data is actually going to kind of show you going forward. Now there's a couple of um, different considerations with this video. It's not intended as financial advice. It kind of never can be. And it's not intended to say this is an area that's going to perform wildly in the future and you must consider it because there's so many different variables that could change that. We just want to show you what the historic and current data sets showing and why that is potentially something to consider um, and could hopefully potentially show you some good leading indicators uh, for future performance. It's just there's no guarantee, unfortunately. There will also be outliers. So we analyze five different locations in Stoke-on-Trent and four of those look very good. Um, but the one that we're not suggesting or we're not showing as passing our kind of initial data sets may go on to perform brilliantly. Um, so there will be outliers that um, don't tend to fit the trend of the data. And there will be properties as well that are outliers. So that postcode might not perform very well um, or a given postcode might perform brilliantly, but a particular property or a particular development within that postcode um, may be overvalued, may not perform, may be problematic in a whole host of reasons. So it's important to do local due diligence on each individual property and development you're considering. Um, but hopefully that combined with something like this hotspot series can show you whether that combination of property and location um, is potentially a good fit for what you're looking at um, to grow your buy to let property portfolio. Um, as well, at the end of this video, we'll show you um, or give you an option um, to opt in for some further information on a particular live ready to go property deal or buy to let that's available in one of the postcodes that we analyze. So if you are looking to grow your property portfolio at the moment and you are maybe considering Stoke or you're interested in what Stoke has to offer, we'll show you all the data for Stoke and then we'll also give you an opportunity at the end of the video um, to get more information about a live property deal. Um, and then also be a button or a link below this video where you can kind of do that or, or opt in for, for kind of more information. Um, as always, any questions, don't hesitate to ask. I look forward to, to going in and showing you what the data says and what Stoke on Trent is, is looking like as an area. All the best. Okay, so we'll get straight into it and show you the five postcodes that cover uh, the main part of Stoke that we're going to be looking at today, as well as obviously the main websites that we use for the data and then also some of the websites. So Storist Information Board, I think, is always a great starting point. If you're brand new to a location, if you're new to the UK even, or you're new to a given kind of area um, and you want to see what it's about, Tourist Information Board is a great uh, snapshot into what the uh, local council think that um, location should be perceived as, what they want to promote, uh, what the area is about, as you can see here, kind of industrial heritage, artistic flair, very good kind of central location to Manchester, Birmingham, not far away, London, on a good motorway network as well, Stoke is, and you've got lots of information on Tourist Information Board that you can get uh, more of a flavour as to what Stoke is. Secondary to that, Google Images is great as well, gives you a good idea as to what the main pictures are showing up as for that location, historic buildings, places to go and see, things to kind of um, do really. So they're good starting points. From there we then look at four main uh, websites or three main websites, Mouse Price, Zoopla and Home. And then we've got here our spreadsheet which kind of makes up uh, the rest of the metrics. Now these spreadsheets are available in our VIP training. We don't have them available to download um, on our main website, but we have covered lots of different areas in our hotspot series, um, and that's all accessible from our VIP training. You can see here we're currently filming this video in October 2018, and we've got some other videos here that cover 
different locations. So if you want access to other areas, um, you can do that in VIP. If you want to just look at Stoke as a location, we'll cover all of the data here in today's video for you. And we'll show you not only which postcodes are performing, but why and what we tend to look for in our key metrics. Now, if you've looked at any of our hotspot series before, you'll have a good idea as to what this um, tends to follow. It's the same format. But if it's brand new to you, this video, I'll just give you a very kind of basic uh, outline as to things to kind of consider. So first of all, there's four key metrics that we look at. Historic performance, historic market growth, historic sale increases and current demand. We have our own internal metrics that we use to kind of pass these and I'll go through these in a bit more detail in a second. But if you wanted to shortcut some of that learning curve and um, five postcodes, the ones that perform Oops, the ones that perform really well for our leading indicators is these highlighted columns here. So ST2, 3, 4, and 5. And ST1 doesn't mean it's not, um, or doesn't mean it's a bad postcode in general. It just means it doesn't pass, uh, first of all, the four growth metrics that we outline. And we have ideally a minimum of three out of four that we want to kind of achieve. So if we've got a column here like ST2, highlighted orange then it's achieved three out of those four metrics if it's highlighted blue then it achieves four out of those four metrics obviously great indication so as i said if you want to shortcut this uh video and you just want to see the postcodes that we would uh, typically kind of suggest it's these postcodes here and then there is a section below this video to look at a live property deal if you want to do as well if you want to stick around and look at the data we'll go straight into that now so the first thing we're looking at is heat map so is the area general stoke on trent positive for the heat map and then also secondary is the postcodes showing positive indications for that as well. What we mean by this is is this kind of heat map section here. Now we've covered heat maps before on, on other videos on the website. Um, but what we want to look at is twofold. Mouse price is great as a heat map to look at a wider uh, snapshot. It gives clearer um, imagery I think when you're first kind of uh, looking at a location. And then Zoopla is good when you want to dial in a bit uh, a bit closer um, onto a given area and see maybe property listings and stuff as well. But mouse price is good here to see, first of all, how Stoke looks as a general area. So this section, southern part, coming up to the west of Stoke, looks to be a high value location. Dark blue is your lower value areas. Dark red are your higher value areas. So we want to focus um, personally on areas that are lighter blue going into kind of greens and then close by to these oranges and, and reds and yellows and um, for us that gives a good indication of a possible spillover of prices into these other areas from these higher value locations and it also gives an idea as to potential tenant profile home ownership um, just general valuations it's a, a very simplistic way of looking at what a current snapshot in time is for local values and then you can work that back um, and cross-reference to, to kind of other data sets from there. Very low value locations and um, for our own experience, our own portfolios haven't performed quite as well in terms of growth, tenant profile, um, actual achieved yields on paper might be high yields. But when you consider void periods, maintenance, arrears, things like that, we tend to favor um, just going up a level in terms of uh, location where possible. So once we know Stoke as an area, uh, potentially shows some potential based on its heat map then we're going to be looking at each individual postcode for this we use Zoopla to do this just go to the for sale section ST1 is the postcode we're going to be looking at first property type values you can leave all these blank if you want we tend to put a minimum value of 15 million in there that's not because we're buying properties for 15 million it's just because we want to clear all of these pins that would usually show up when you first do a search of property we just want to look at the heat map rather than the actual specific properties at this stage so it just makes it a bit cleaner for us to look at so as you can see heat map here in ST1 you've got a few dark blue areas, not many surrounding locations that are high value locations. So on our postcode map or on our Excel spreadsheet should I say, we've put this as a no for being heat map uh, positive. Whereas the other postcodes ST2 to 5 we show as uh, passing that criteria. Now I'm not going to go through every single postcode and every single data set, I'll just show you the basic premise of what we've covered, how we've covered it and what that data tends to show. So you can then use that 
in your own areas. You can use that certainly to cross-reference Stoke if you wanted to and see if that's a location for you. And we'll do a heat map for ST2. Just scroll in a bit closer. Now ST2 has some darker blue sections here like ST1, but they're less. And you have some lighter blue areas that cover that area as well. And then you also have some very nearby values, lighter yellows, some good oranges and some kind of reds. So for us, if we could kind of look at property opportunities closer towards this region here, that's a little bit better from a, uh, a potential growth perspective with spillover of values. So that's why we've initially said yes for that passing that criteria. And then ST3, show you what that shows and looks like as well. Now there's no guarantee here. There's no um, specific thing that we're looking for other than the, the potential for kind of house price um, spillover on some of these higher value areas. So it's a little bit gut instinct as to what you would favor and why you would select um, that area as passing or failing. So certainly you can use our data set if you want to. You can kind of create your own and, and use your own I suppose thresholds as to what you're comfortable with and um, but for us st1 wouldn't pass st2 3 4 5 as you can see here um, would be better indicators for these house prices so once that's passed next up we're going to be looking at more nuanced data with value changes over a 12 month five year and 10 year time frame and then also average price paid over a 12 month five year and 10 year time frame now this data we get squarely from Zoopla. If you go to house prices, type in your postcode, so ST1 in this instance, it will come up with market activity at the top. Now this is always going to be variable because it's showing a live snapshot in time. We're doing this in October um, 2018. So if you were to check this another week or month um, ahead, these data are going to be slightly different. Um, but you can see the market activity you can check and change your date range here and you can see what sort of volumes and data we're looking at. So we're potentially focusing here on value changes and average price paid. And then also it gives you a percentage here on the value change as well. So effectively what this is showing is ST1 as a postcode in the last 12 months had a value change of negative 1.98% or as a value price range is 2026. And that's where we have this data, as you can kind of see here. Now, there's lots of things to consider here, local locations, uh, sorry, local um, values, and also national kind of market sentiment are always going to kind of change depending on time of year. So December might be different than July. It's also going to change depending on what's kind of happening at that point in time. If mortgages and access to finances, easy. If generally people are very buoyant about the property market your data sets here are always going to kind of change so you do have to consider kind of apples for apples if you're comparing stoke to newcastle to birmingham for example it's good to do that at the same time of year and then you can see what data each location is showing stoke on trent here as a general area we've got data at the top and then we've got each postcode location so the first thing that we're going to be focusing on as our main criteria is this column here the last five years to see what sort of percentage of value change has happened. Certainly the last 12 months is important to consider. It just gives you an idea as to whether that market is going up, down or staying static. But what we really want to see is over the last five year time frame, a bigger snapshot, what sort of house price growth we've had uh, locally within that area. Now for us, first um, performance metric is just passing on the heat map. Second performance metric is an 18% or above increase in value in the last five years. Now there's no, um, I suppose, industry standard for this. This is just a guide that we've used as a company internally for us to show whether a particular postcode is, is performing or not. So for us, all of these postcodes, not only Stoke in general, but all of these postcodes have achieved um, significantly higher than 18% mark, which is a good indication. Now ST1 isn't highlighted here because it fails for us on the heat map in general. Um, we're looking for a minimum of three growth metrics achieved. Ideally four would be perfect, but a minimum of three. 
but if it fails the heat map that for us is a is a kind of a hard stop uh, no so we wouldn't look to progress we had the data but we wouldn't look to progress that location uh, further on down so that's why it's not highlighted even though you can see here it's got higher than 18 percent value change now as i said there's no national um criteria or baseline for this this is just us internally property investments uk what company um baselines we use when we're looking at new locations next up we're going to be looking at average price paid now again this data comes from zoopla you can change the areas five years uh, sorry time frame you can change the area location and we're looking at this average price paid over a five year time frame compared to a 12 month time frame we use a formula here to give us that results but you can get that fundamentally from this data set here we're just comparing this last five years last 12 months and seeing what the price difference has been as a percentage over that time frame so for us our criteria is about five percent and above anything below that um, would sort of just fall below our, our minimum criteria so st2 as you can see is quite close to five percent but it's just slightly below it st1 although it fails on the heat map performs very well in terms of average price growth in the last five years or 12 months to five years and stoke on trend in general has performed over that five percent baseline that we've kind of set three four and five also pass uh, so as in st3 st4 and st5 also pass that baseline criteria and then finally we're looking at average selling time so not only how the market is performed historically in terms of value changes and actual physical average price paid and also what the current value of properties is maybe like in that area to give us a good indication as to what sort of yields we might kind of get there's other data calculations you can do for that but finally we want to look at how quick how buoyant a location is going to be and that's where home.uk uh, sorry home credit k really helps out you're looking for really time to sell analysis so you can search that from the, the main website put in your postcode we're looking at st1 it comes up there's loads of different data sets that home says uh, we're looking here at time to sell overall just in the postcode area the last 90 days now we're not looking at the price bands but you can do that you can look at price bands number of bedrooms property types you can really break it down as to, to what level of data you want for us we just want to see how that postcode is performing as a general area now this is also going to give you a mixed data depending on how uh, big that postcode area is like if it's a small area you're looking at there might not be many sales in that location over the last 90 days so your data set could be skewed so it's important to kind of consider that if you are looking at smaller towns um, or very rural areas you're not going to have enough data to probably give you a, a clear indication of how um, quick or active a market might be because you might have a property in there that's an outlier that sells really fast or sells really slow but this is a good data set to look at. ST1 is a good area in terms of size, decent number of properties. There's no minimum or maximum that we look at, but just something to kind of bear in mind. And we're looking at median selling time here, so 30 days. Mainly we look at median rather than mean because median just strips out those outliers and um, the properties that do take longer to sell or do sell really quick. We want to just look at averages, 30 days average in ST1. And then we input that into our column here. For us, we're looking at a sale time less than 60 days is a good positive indicator of nice sale speed in that location. So all of these postcodes pass for that. Quite quick sales happening currently in Stoke-on-Trent, quite a buoyant market. And that would also be indicative here. You can see the house price average paid going up quite well. And over the last 10 years, the value change and also the last five years, the value change in those areas have had um, some quite significant growth. So certainly over this snapshot of data, uh, each of these postcodes are performing quite well from where they were maybe five years ago. So the postcodes that pass all four metrics are ST3, 4 and 5, which is great, means they've got good heat map and positive indicators for spillover of uh, prices potentially. Good value changes in the last five years, good average price paid in the last 12 months to five years, and then a quick selling time as well. So they're showing quite well. ST1, as we said, unfortunately falls down on the heat map. And ST2, although it's got a relatively dark blue section of the, or some dark blue sections of the heat map, that's a, a bit of a touch and go actually, whether that passed the heat map. So um, you can use your own kind of guidance on that, whether you would pass that 
um, or not we did it's kind of squeaked through from our criteria um, and then it went on to perform quite well with value changes just under on average price paid in the last 12 months to five years um, but then quite a quick current selling time in days so for us that passes three out of the four metrics as, as a postcode area and um, so that's it really it gives you hopefully a good idea as to the data sets that we use the websites that we use and the types of postcodes that we see performing currently um, quite well we do have a, a property it's available as a live opportunity at the moment in the ST um, area or Stoke-on-Trent area. If you look below this video, there'll be either a button or a link or an opt-in form where you can get more information about that property deal. We don't have these property deals directly. We don't source them directly um, ourselves or provide them as deals directly ourselves. We tend to work with a couple of key master agents for buy to or platforms for property crowdfunding. And we can introduce you to these companies and the developments that we find that we feel fit our own internal criteria and pass our own location kind of metrics. So if you are looking for a property deal currently, um, look below this video and you'll be able to kind of get more information about some live opportunities. If you like the areas, if you like the look of these postcodes and you're yeah ready to add to your buy to let portfolio. Hope that helps. And if you've got any questions, as always, uh, don't hesitate to ask. All the best. Take care. Bye.